Well, earlier in the week, we showed you the latest New York Times Siena College National Survey that has Donald Trump tied with President Joe Biden in a hypothetical 2024 matchup, 43 percent apiece among registered voters. That tie is due in large part to eroding support for President Biden among some key groups that helped propel him to victory in 2020. Let's bring in MSNBC contributor and director of polling at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University, John Della Volpe, and president of the National Action Network and host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. Good to have you both. John Della Volpe, um, what, what do we see in Dwight, uh, Biden's poll numbers in, in some ways not surging at this point? Well, I think a lot of those poll numbers, Mika, are driven, I think, by this, this, the interdependence of younger voters, which you mentioned last screen, with African-American black voters and Hispanic voters, which disproportionately are younger. And essentially, I think that this is a two-act play. A lot of those people have only chosen to, 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 to check out the second act of the play. They haven't, they've been tuned, mm -hmm. to, tuned out of politics for the better part of the last couple of years. To, to try to maintain some balance in their lives and to try to stay happy. So I think, listen, it's good news, bad news. The good news is, I think, for the Biden campaign, that if we're tied, if the campaign is tied now and you're underperforming among those key constituencies that have been supportive of democratic policies and values, that's an opportunity, I think, to grow from that once the campaign really begins to communicate with folks. I just think, more broadly speaking, though, when we talk about the political issues, it's a very dark moment in the country. But when we talk about personal issues, when we ask people, not the political question about how the economy is doing, but have you, have you been able to take a vacation? How's your family? How, how healthy do you feel? We have a very, very different perspective. And people, I think, are much happier than a lot of the polls, I think, might lead us to believe. So, uh, Rev, you, you look at the numbers, uh, Joe Biden's uh, support has dropped significantly among people of color, uh, especially among Latino voters, but also among uh, black Americans. Um, what, what, what can you uh, help us out here? What, what's going on? Why are those numbers dropping? I think that it's a matter of message and messengers. And what I mean by that, I think that there's clearly a case to be made to black and Latino voters and voters of color of uh, what Joe Biden and, and uh, Kamala Harris's administration has done from the infrastructure bill to inflation reduction and all. The question is how you translate that so the average African-American, average Latino and others understand what it means to them. Like these roadways are not just magically being dealt with now, they're jobs and they're in your neighborhood. That has not been communicated and communicated by people they trust. I think the other part of this is when you look at the fact that you have a party that has basically killed affirmative action that has robbed people of the right of saying that I, no matter what my life is, should be able to access businesses with the Supreme Court siding uh, with a woman who had this LGBTQ case. When you deal with uh, uh, situations uh, in the criminal justice matter that the only reason we didn't get a George Floyd bill is this Republican Party voted against it. If this is messaged right with the right messengers, I think you'll see these numbers increasingly uh, change. But I don't think people are getting it. P people tell me every day on radio, every day with Nash Action Network, why didn't something happen with the George Floyd bill? Because every Republican in the House and the Senate voted against it. That's not getting out. And I think that if they get their message out, they will not be uh, accused of not getting anything done. They will see that they were blocked. I think the, the mm -hmm. challenge for Biden-Harris is to get the right message and the right messages that people trust in those communities. John, these numbers frustrate the White House. They feel like we just 
showed some numbers in our last business segment. Unemployment, 3.5% at historic lows. Inflation is ticking down. All the economic data, the Fed has taken the recession off the table for next year. That forecast is gone. Black unemployment is at record lows. They can go on and on down the list. President Biden could say, I tried for young people to erase their student loan debt. The court said I couldn't do that. So where is the room for growth as you talk to young people and poll them? What do they need to see from the White House to get back on board? Well, I, they, want, they need to see the tangible difference that this is making in their lives. And I think, Willie, just changing the frame. I was quite surprised. I did a, a, a survey recently through, through my company, Social Sphere, and we asked on a zero to 10 scale, how happy are you? And I found that 50% of Americans gave an eight, nine, or 10, which means they are very happy. In fact, Democrats and Republicans indicate that the personal economic factors are much more positive and, and are much more aligned with the macro numbers that we're seeing from the stock market and other indicators. It's that when we kind of pollute this conversation with over, overly politicized words now, like the economy, right track, wrong track, that's when people kind of divide into, into, into their red and blue camps. So I think kind of a reflection of how people's individual lives are going could potentially kind of change, change, the, dyna change the dynamic here. I'm also so, uh, not the pollster at the table, but I have a question for the pollster at the table, which is when you, you see the, the chyron that we pull up about the fact that there's erosion in some key groups. I think it's important to point out that in something like that New York Times poll, when you're talking about Latino voters, you're talking about something like a sample size of 140 people, right. right? Which can give you some sense of direction. It doesn't necessarily tell you we're a national sample of Latino or black voters are. And I think it's also important to, just, to make sure that we underline here, when you talk about black voters, you talk about Latino voters, you talk about AAPI voters, they still support this president and Democrats at incredibly high rates. The concern among party officials, as I understand it, has to do with the fact that there is some slippage and an understanding of why that is because of their knowledge that they are going to need to rely on this coalition going into 2024. And it's not necessarily slippage in a two-way contest. We're, what I think we're seeing in, in this poll, in some of our polls, is concern about third party and, and people just not making up their mind. In fact, among those younger constituencies, of which Latino, African American, and uh, younger people, uh, uh, Gen Z are, there's basically two to three times more support for third party options, no labels and green parties party than we see for older voters. So it's a very, very kind of complicated. Um, I do think, though, as, as Reverend said, you know, the message, the message and the messengers are so important. And I think what could give Julia Chavez Rodriguez, you know, some optimism is that the values were aligned. Values need to be aligned first before you can have a message and before you can have that messenger. And I think that's something that's keeping the Democrats afloat right now. So, so John, um, uh, George W. Bush would have never been elected in 2000 without Ralph Nader. Um, Donald Trump would have never been elected in 2016 without Jill Stein. I'm wondering in 2024, will we be looking back saying Donald Trump would have never been reelected and uh, continued his assault on American democracy except for the candidacy of, say, Cornell West or a no labels candidate? Now, Let's, again, just be clear, I feel like I have to say this, you talk to anybody no labels, they will tell you they have one goal, and that's keeping Donald Trump out of the White House. So we'll see what happens there, but let's just talk about Cornell West. Um, you know, how, how, how devastating is it uh, if Cornell takes two, three, four percent from Joe Biden in 2024? Well, Joe, I think if he takes that 2 to 3%, it's going to be from the constituencies that we just talked about. And I think that could absolutely right. make the difference. Donald Trump will be elected or not reelected, I think, based upon uh, no labels and, and Green Party's Cornell West. I don't think there's any question about his inability to get a majority of the American electorate and a majority of the, uh, of the Electoral College. So, Rev, let's engage on that subject real quick. I have a story. Uh, this week about Democrats being nervous about exactly this scenario, that it would, because this is, race is going to be close. It's just on the margins, whether it is a no labels candidate, those close to the president are far more concerned about a Cornell West figure or the professor himself stealing away just enough. Progressive, young votes, 
black votes, whatever it might be, to tip the scales. Now, most Democratic, even big uh, progressive names like Bernie Sanders and AOC have all said, no, 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 we have to stay with the president. The stakes are too high. But we have seen Donald Trump made some inroads in, with black men in 2020. How does this, how do you combine all these things? How worried should the White House be? Again, message and messenger. The, the question is, and, and I know and have a lot of respect for Cornell West. I've not talked to him since he announced. So I don't know what his strategy is. But I think the way you handle this is do we, with a Donald Trump looming, do we want to make a statement or do we want a government? And I think that you've got to talk to people just that clear. We absolutely need to make statements. But do we do it at the expense of losing government, a government that we see is bent on erasing everything that was uh, won for blacks, for women, for gays since the civil rights movement? And I think you take this head on. Rather than ignore it, rather than having something wrong with your body and you don't go to the doctor, you deal with the potential problem, you deal with the issues that are being raised, which may be the reason they're running. And if you deal with the issues, I think that you have people will make a real mature decision. But don't avoid the issues that's being raised.